Hey, Snow Tracks YouTubers, it is finally time for another insightful Snow Tracks walk around done by yours truly. It's Motorhead Mark, and uh, kind of excited to do this. This is my first walk around of the year, and we're just like everybody else, uh, getting our, our demo units from the manufacturers this year has been really difficult because of supply chain shortages and all kinds of consequences and problems. But uh, this is one of our very first press units, and this is a 2023 ski -Doo MXZ Blizzard. So let me just uh, give you the lie of the land before we get into this unit. Uh, ski -Doo has rationalized their MXZ lineup quite a bit. So there's an MXZ XRS, which is one trim level above this, and there's the MXZ Sport, which is one trim level below this, and only available with a 600, a special 685 horsepower version. So this is your meat and potatoes, uh, bread and butter, Skidoo MXZ this year. This is the one that, uh, that uh, was big on uh, spring break and uh, in season sales. So there's a lot to talk about and uh, let's get started. Just want to say that this is now officially the G5, okay? So what we had before was the G4. By the way, if you're wondering why I've got gloves on, it's because it was freezing cold here today, uh, minus 21 Celsius this morning. So uh, we had to bundle up a bit. Gray, my camera guy, is working uh, with gloves on today too, so you know it must be cold. So uh, this MXZ Blizzard version comes really well equipped this year. Blizzard used to kind of be the downscale one, which was less trim less uh, standard equipment. Now the things have kind of changed. You can see that you've got uh, uh, KYB uh, 36 EA3 clicker shocks on the front uh, IFS and on the rear arm. That's not uh, normally blizzard kind of material, but they are uh, standard. You've got the 7.25 inch uh, screen which is uh, not the 10 inch, okay? This is the, the, the standard screen now, but it's a really nice upgrade. And of course it's G5, so it's, it's all new bodywork. So let's start right up front and talk about what we've got here in terms of uh, suspension. We've got the virtually identical uh, RAS X IFS, and when I say identical, it is identical to last year's on the G4. Remember, Skidoo did an upgrade and took the front suspension to X status and the R motion to X status. What that means is, is this is a wider front end than the first G4's head. G5's will always have this front end, but it is wider. Therefore, it has more travel and it has uh, inherently more bump steer when you go wider. So what they've done is they've gone standard uh, equipment with a steering rack. And in the old days, we used to call that a controlled roll center setup. There's a lot of names for it and engineers would probably slap me if they could get me because uh, I'm not supposed to refer to it as that. But that's what we called it, a CRC front end. So this is the same front end that's on an XRS. It has a steering rack. The shocks, as I told you before, are, and they, they deserve to be explained here. These are KYB's answer to Fox QS3s. And everybody knows how much we like QS3s. Like, let's just get over this 16 or 21 clicks and all this stuff that we've lived with for the last, what, 15 years? There's three settings, my friends, three. Here we go. That's full, full soft, medium, full hard. See how easy that was? And you don't need 16 or 21 settings. Trust me, nobody does unless you're on a racetrack. This gives you great range of adjustability. There's a, a tangible, like significant difference as you go through the clicks. It's not like when you've got a 16 clicker KYB and you move it one click. I mean, unless you're, you know, unless you're like a snowcross champion, you're not gonna be able to perceive that distance uh, or that difference because it's imperceptible. But with the three clicks, it works great and you'll notice a difference. So you'll notice that I've got these in full soft. That's where you start. So for those of you guys who uh, email us and some of you somehow get our phone number and call us and you want to talk about how to set your suspension up, this is easy. You can do it yourself. Start on full soft, ride it through the bumps that you like riding at the speeds you like riding. See what happens if it bottoms once in a while or bottoms too often, 
go up to the middle setting. If that's not good enough, go up to the hard and it won't bottom anymore. So it's an, it's an easy discipline. The rear arm in the R Motion X has the same 36 Pro 36 uh, EA3 clicker shock in the back with a, a, a reservoir. These, of course, are piggyback reservoirs. It's a really nice shock package. And, you know, what are you going to say? KYB, they make great stuff. They do. Their stuff is high quality. I'm not saying Fox isn't, but KYB knows what they're doing as well. So that covers the front end. Uh, these spindles were, were new two years ago to uh, actually one of the guys at the factory told me they had to put shaved spindles on to get these to fit on a tractor on a transport truck two boxes wide because the front end was so wide when they uh, made the a the a-frames longer so uh, it's a new spindle and you can always tell whether you've got the x package suspension on a sled if it's a g4 you can always tell by those spindles they are quite a bit different than the uh, the regular rev uh, g4 spindle okay so what do we talk about next? Let's talk about our motion. We're on suspension. Okay, our motion isn't just a good suspension. It is still the best ride in the business. This is a 129 inch version. That's what the Blizzard comes with. Um, this has the X designation and I'm gonna to explain to you why in, in case you haven't taken notes with my insightful walk arounds, so I'm gonna explain this to you again. See this bolt right here? that holds the front torque arm in place. This is where the front torque arm is pushing from on the rail, by the way. There's where the power enters the chassis right there. Look at how long that is. It's the longest front torque arm in the biz. And so here's the deal. The X has an adjustable feature on that bolt. The bolt is eccentric. In other words, as you rotate it, it pushes the front, front torque arm forward or pulls it backward. What you want is, is you want to set it up for the kind of weight transfer you like. If you don't like uh, a sled that wheelies a lot, you'd much rather that when you accelerate it stays flat, then what you do is, is you adjust the eccentric so it's up higher at the back. So this and this are flatter then when it's pushing ahead on the snowmobile, it will tend to keep the nose down. If you like a more playful feel, you like it to wheelie, okay, so then adjust the torque arm eccentric bolt on the rail, the eccentric, so that the torque arm ends up going down. And then this angle is more like down angle, not straight. And what happens is when you get on the gas, the power is coming through the torque arm into the chassis. Remember we talked about this? That's where the power enters the chassis, right there what'll happen is, is the front end will get pushed up. And believe me, you're gonna look at that bolt and you're gonna say, come on, it can't make that much difference. It does, it makes a huge difference. The sled handles completely differently if you fool around with that eccentric. So you can get the flat acceleration or you can get a playful feel with wheelies. The only thing that you'll find with that is, is that the sled will to a certain limited degree will tend to stand up mid corner. So if you're going to a corner, you're dragging the brake, the tail's out, and then you, you get to the apex, you let go of the brake and you get into some throttle, then you get seriously into some throttle, what'll happen is, is the inside ski will get light. It may come up, it may not, depends on how hard you're pushing it. When you've got that flat, the torque arm flat, it won't do that. It'll corner really flat. In fact, it'll corner flat enough that as, as you continue to give it turn in, you will get a hint of understeer. So you can compensate that by just backing off a bit on your adjustment. This chassis and this suspension is pretty trick. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff you can do to improve the way it works. Okay, so you've got the regular G4 tunnel. It's a sandwich. Let me move my, my can of Perrier. Okay, it's a sandwich. The heat exchanger's up in this section in the top of it. There's not extruded aluminum uh, coolers riveted in the tunnel. The whole tunnel carries water. And uh, yeah, it's, it's an interesting design. It came out with the G4. Is it better? Well, it's lighter and less parts. The only problem with it is if you throw a stud or you throw a rock, you can, you can cause holes to get punctured in the top of the tunnel and then you lose your coolant. I mean, it's not something that happens every day, but if you had the old coolers, you know, they used to do a demonstration, Polaris used to do a demonstration with a sledgehammer and they'd run water through a cooler and then hit it with a sledgehammer and they wouldn't leak. These you wouldn't want to hit with a sledgehammer, not that you're ever going to do that riding a snowmobile. So it is lighter, 
and it does cool better too because there's way more surface area so that's an advantage as well okay you like that um it just uh, anecdotally link stuff comes standard now you know that this is a, a 129 so it's the shorter tunnel it's not the renegade tunnel uh you got the vented running boards that are a little bit flatter on the g5 this year that's a subtle difference all the bodywork while we're up front here all the bodywork is new so Here's one that really gets me. I, I just don't understand this. I went through the Skidoo website before we came out here to do this walk around to make sure I knew what I was talking about, which can be a miracle at times. Um, how come they're not talking about the engine mount system? And the whole website on all G5s, all models, there's no talk about the, the, uh, the new engine mounts. And that is the big news as far as I'm concerned because G4s were such a refined looking piece, so nicely assembled, really a nice piece of work. But honestly, they shook so hard when they idled, you think they'd vibrate and land in the ditch off the trail when you're letting them run. They, they shook, the windshield shook, the hood shook, everything was shaking on the front of it and it, it wasn't very refined. Now, if you remember when Polaris introduced the Matrix, they were crowing about a new proprietary engine mount system that doesn't use a torque uh, stop and their uh, 850 Liberty the uh, or Patriot uh, is much better vibration controlled than the G4. So here we go. Skidoo doesn't sit still for long. This is a completely new proprietary engine mounting system and I believe it does not have a torque stop either. So uh, I'm going to start it because you always want this. You always drive us nuts if we don't start the sled. So I'm going to start it and let you see what the vibration is like and then you can run out in the garage and start your G4 and see uh, if you think it's any different. Okay, that's as bad as it gets right there on the windshield. If this were a G4, the windshield would not only be shaking, it would be rattling. There'd be a, a, a noticeable amount of noise from it. And of course, what we've got here is, is we've got a... We've got an 850cc Rotax E-Tech that puts out 165 horsepower. It uses the boost injectors, only the 850 get that, not the 600. Uses boost injectors to get that power. It's a, a very stout motor. Um, you don't have to make excuses to anybody about this. This thing is a fast snowmobile and it's very competitive in the marketplace, uh, just for those of you who are wondering about that. It's a nice uh, engine package. It's got the P-Drive roller tower primary, which is hands down, running away, the best idea anybody's come up in the clutching business with so far. Virtually no friction, no torque tower buttons to wear out. It just rolls in and out, the primary. So you've got a roller tower primary and a roller cam secondary great clutching duo and while we're here i'm going to show you something that's kind of cool as well skidoo got very serious about venting so you can see that you've got this vent here and you've got this fixture here it's that's the center of the jack shaft and this fits together to create there's a fan in here and this creates a lot of air moving and blowing out of there to give better belt cooling and it's a cool idea and quite frankly i think skidoo particularly on the 850s needed to do something like that because belt heat was uh, on the g4 was a little bit of an issue um, let me keep going on uh, maybe we'll stay up here well wait let's do the skis this is another variation this is the pilot x ski it's another variation i don't know what they do with all the tooling they have for skis skidoo comes out with skis like skittles i mean they they have so many different kinds of pilot skis that they walk away from and then do another version another edition the good news is they get better every time they do it so these are a new deeper uh, uh, keel ski they use the same carbides good news if you dealt in your g4 and uh, you've got a set of carbides in stock in the garage you're going to be able to use them because they're the same on this okay uh up here on the bars uh, all new uh, handlebar switch gear on the left side of the cluster controls everything as it always has just kind of techier looking makes a little more sense to me there's your start button one cr uh, criticism I would say this button should be red uh, if, if you're somebody new gets on the sled they're kind of fiddling around if you see that that's red you know it's either start or, start or stop 
Um, the rest of it is self-explanatory headlight. You can toggle the gauge. You can have the tack where you want it. You can have the speedo where you want it. You've got a lot of versatility to do a lot of things. You've got your nice uh, Brembo brake and master cylinder. Got nice uh, hooked handlebars and a nice storage area for nonetheless than a cache of pemmican. So that will be uh, well received by everyone. It's a big storage area. It's not... Uh, 100% snow tight, but it's it's a good storage area. This is supposed to be the place where you put a windshield. Between us, this is not a windshield. This is something else. It's some kind of a deflector. Uh, it's a frostbite inducer. Get the mid-height windshield before you leave your dealer, and uh, you'll be comfortable all winter. It's a nice-looking windshield, and, and I got to say, that's what they're going for for curb appeal. They win. We talked a lot about the rear suspension, about our motion. You've got that clicker, three position clicker shock on the rear arm. So it's the same shock as the, uh, as the fronts from KYB. The Blizzard is like a premium ride now. It's, it's got a lot of cool stuff. There's a, a lot of things that uh, previously you wouldn't have expected to get on a Blizzard, but it's the mainstream uh, MXZ this year. And of course, we're only talking MXZ. We're gonna have later on, we're gonna have a Renegade uh, XRS with smart shocks to do a walk around on. Hopefully we'll have that very shortly. So uh, near as I can tell, we've gone over the, uh, oh, the track. Yeah, it's a, it's a uh, 15 wide 125, and the optional track is a 15 wide 125 ice ripper. So that's the, that's the lug you're gonna get is a one and a quarter inch lug. And this one does have an ice ripper on it. And I would highly recommend anyone who's, you know, has the choice now because you can't order a sled now. But if you have the choice at a dealer, pay the money for the ice ripper. It's absolutely worth it. Doesn't mean you shouldn't stud, you shouldn't use traction studs. What it means is, is if you don't, you're not gonna end up donutting upside down and ending in the ditch. It's, it's, a, it's a great idea. So uh, yeah, I think that that covers this off. I, I mean, obviously we have to comment on the G5 styling and I think it's all about personal taste and what you really like. Is is it good looking? I think it is better looking than the G4. The G4 was a little bit uh, rock'em sock'em robot, a little bit square. This has got a more organic. How do you like that word, eh? You, you usually only hear that on a cooking show. It's a uh, it's a more organic look. It's kind of smoother and more curved. I think it's more appealing. I like it. You might not, but what does it matter? Uh, they're going to sell a jillion of these things and already have because they're skidoo. They're, uh, they're on an absolute rocket ride in terms of market share and popularity, and that's because you guys love this stuff. So I hope that uh, you learned something and uh, that I helped you figure out something about the G5, and we'll have more coming up. So before I say goodbye, can you like me and subscribe? And uh, we'd really appreciate that. And uh, stay tuned because there's more coming, lots more coming for this winter. Great stuff. Thank you.